Welcome everyone to the ultimate fire tutorial for Blender. First, we're going to take a look on how to create fire on different objects. Essentially, it's the exact same process for each object. Later, we will look how to add different objects that collide with the fire. And in the end, we will look at the shader and how to make it look super realistic with the cycles renderer. So let's get started. If you have a new scene, just add in your object. It doesn't really matter what object it is. You can even import some normal OBJ or FBX file, whatever you like. It works for each object the same. Select your model, go to object over here, select quick effects and choose quick smoke. As you can see, everything you need will pop up instantly. You have a smoke domain outside, which means everything that happens in this box will be affected by the smoke or fire simulation. So let's make this a little bit bigger. So everything we do will get captured in this box. After that, we can select our object. And if we hit play, the smoke should actually start rising. But we don't want smoke, we want fire. So we go into the physics section and on the flow type, change it to fire. You can also choose fire and smoke if you want some smoke to it, but in my case, I just want the fire. To have some more fuel, we change it to two. This just means we have some more fire, but you won't see it immediately. After that, on the flow source, change the surface emission to a lower value. In my case, I choose 0.5. This just means, as you can see, the fire will start closer to, the, to your object. So if the emission is 2, the fire starts way more outside of around your object. And if you pick 0.5 as before, the fire starts super close to your object, which in my case, or in my opinion, looks way more realistic. After that, we want to have some more variation to the fire. That's why we go into the texture settings and add a new one. Change the type to cloud and this cloud texture will randomize the fire and it will look more realistic. You can change the size to a lower value. Let's choose 0.1 and the contrast to five so we can actually see the effect better. Go back to your physics section, activate the texture, open it and choose the texture we just created. As you can see, the texture has already affected the model. If you press play now, the fire looks super weird still and it doesn't actually behave like a fire. We can change that by selecting the domain and change some settings. At the top, you can see the resolution division. This means how detailed the flames and the fire look. 32 is super low detailed, but it loads super fast. For the viewport right now, we just choose something like 64. So it plays actually quite fast and we can see what the settings and changes do. Later for rendering, I will either use 128 or double it, so 256. If you choose 256, this is super high detailed, but it takes a lot, a lot of time to render or to calculate. So just be careful. If you do not have a super strong PC, I would recommend to use 128. Right now I will use 64 just to change some settings and see the effect. Down in the gas and fire settings, we can change how big the fire should be. So reaction speed means how big the fire is. So if we up this to two, it's actually quite the opposite. If you up it, the fire is smaller. And if you put this value to, let's say 0.1, the fire gets super big. Just wait for it and see how it looks. In my case, I do not want that big of a fire. We just put it to 0.5, which is good for me. Vorticity means how crazy the fire behaves, like how much turbulence in the fire is. So if we put this to two, the fire should go super crazy and in all directions. In my opinion, I don't want that. So I just lower this value to, let's say 0.3 and let's check it out how it looks. This looks fine to me. The fire moves up, it goes a little bit crazy, but 
this looks good. You can change even more settings, such as the noise, the temperature, whatever you like. Normally, I just play around with the settings I just showed you, which is quite all right if you just want to have a good fire. If you are happy with your settings, you can go to cache and change the folder where the simulation should be saved and how long the simulation should be. In my case, I just select frame 1 to 120, which is all right. Then under type, you can go to all and hit bake all if you're ready. I just changed the resolution to 128. So make sure all your settings are set up correct and then hit bake all. After it's done, you can scroll through the timeline and see how your fire simulation looks. Okay, now let's say you want to add a collider to the scene or an object where the fire should bounce off. So let's just add in a cube, scale it properly. Again, you can use whatever object you like. It will work for each object the same. Select the collider object and press fluid. In the type, select effector and the effector type should be set to collision. If you press play, the collider should already work. If this is not the case for you, we have two solutions. First, select the object, press tab to go into edit mode, right click and subdivide. If you subdivide this a few times, the object has more vertices where the fire can bounce off and it could be more precise. This could be a problem for like clipping. Other than that, you can change the surface thickness over here. If you put this to an extreme number such as 2 and press play, we can see that the collision starts before the fire touches the object. The surface thickness setting means that there is like a buffer between, between the actual object and the invisible collision object. So the bigger the number here is, the further away the collision starts. This can help if the fire clips through your object, but you do not want to have it that extreme. So let's put the value to 0.1 and press play again. As you can see now, the collision starts right on the object and everything works accordingly. Finally, we'll look at the render settings. Go into the shadings tab and make sure you are not in this shading viewport, but in the actual cycle shading viewport. So select the cycle render over here in the render engine and also choose it at the top. To change the fire material, select the domain. And as you can see, there is already a pre-made volume texture. That we actually can see the fire right now, we need to add an attribute node. In this attribute node, we need to change the name to heat. This is really important that this is written correctly because the attribute heat stores a lot of information about the fire and we will use it. Add in a color ramp node in between, connect the attribute with the color ramp and the color ramp with the emission strength. As you can see, things change already. Move the black slider up and the white slider down. Add in a third slider and move this one to the back. This one should also be a little bit darker, but not black. As you can see, we have already way more details in the flames. Play around with the sliders until you have to look you want. In my case, I do not want any smoke, so I change the density to zero. To give the flame some color, I add in a second color ramp node, also connect the attribute with it and connect the color ramp to the emission color. Now I can change the color of the black slider to an orange reddish color and change the white in the back to a lighter orange reddish color. To make the flame brighter, we can add in a math node and plug it in between the color ramp and the emission strength. Change it from add to multiply and you can up the value to whatever you think looks best for your scene. If you want to use the exact same settings for your other fire simulation, select the domain and change the smoke material to the one we just created. As you can also see now better, we have some spots with fire and some spots without. This is because we added the texture 
the noise texture before, and this adds also to the realism of the scene. So this was it everybody, I hope you could learn something. If you have some questions, just write it in the comments. Uh, leave a like if you liked it and see you the next time. Bye bye.